boys and girls. I got the guys from Bad Anger Pictures. Okay, so guys, now check it out. People want to know what kind of a project you got going on right now. The rumor is you've got a new film that's coming out called Slaughter Farm. That is true. It's a script I wrote. It's the it's the fourth one I completed. The three others, while I I I like them, I I was trying to come up with what I hope is going to be a worthy follow up to you know my work as Leatherface and what I I hope the fans will will be able to relate to. Uh, Slaughter Farm is is. Uh, a movie certainly uh in the slasher horror genre it's i hope different enough that people find it compelling it was a, it was a story that certainly captivated me so i'm anxious to uh bring it to the world now dan you, is this a story that you had prior to your uh portrayal of leatherface no actually it, it it came to me you know hell it was a couple of years afterward um like i say i i'd been working on uh, other scripts and 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 whatnot and then uh just wasn't quite satisfied with that so i can tell you a real quick story uh about the about slaughter farm and and my first hearing about it we were working on a, a, a much lower budget movie idea we were gonna perhaps do a kickstarter campaign for it and we were in the throes of getting all of that together and i will forget uh dan called me from vegas one day and he said uh he said brother he, he said forget the other movie for now he said i've got this new idea i'm gonna send you the script in a few days i've been working on it like crazy i'm on page 66 i still remember the page number he said he was on and a few days later in my email he had he had completed slaughter farm and sent it and i read it and it's just yeah, I mean, it was a page turner because it, it follows a lot of the familiar themes of horror that you you know that, you, you, that people expect, but it's got a couple of just insane turns and changes. And the story itself is Dan. Maybe you can talk, tell just whatever you would like to tell as far as the synopsis of the story because I think that's really important as well. Well, I like uh, you know the 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 thing that uh, that kind of inspired the whole thing was. A, uh, a story I had heard about the uh, black market human organ trade. We we all walk around uh, kind of unaware of the fact that there's a uh, a thriving black market uh, for for human organs and tissues, making us all worth a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we 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 lock our doors because you know we don't want people to take our Right. But then we walk outside with about a million dollars worth of uh, vital organ. Um, and I don't know, maybe it's the businessman in me or something that uh, made me realize, geez, if, if somebody ever got the idea of uh, you know starting to harvest these, certainly with unwilling donors, uh, it, it could be interesting. Anyway, that was that was kind of the, the germ of it that uh, grew into this story. Uh, I'm, it's hard to it's hard to know where the spoilers end. But, um, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it's gruesome, but it's not all just gore. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's as as you can imagine when you start removing organs, it gets bloody. But you know, that's not really the the main thrust of the movie. I think we, I think we've got a lot of uh, a lot of compelling characters that we're going to. Basically put through hell <laughs> nice and of course that's what the fans want you know it's funny that uh, I actually had a conversation with Ron not too long ago about um, about how you wrote the script and how intricate it was and how that's what it dealt with in it you're worth more dead than alive and this is really cool but I did want to talk to happy new year by the way <laughs> happy new year you know what's really cool about the uh, the film Slaughter Farm is it kind of uh, you know recalls a little bit of your character of Leatherface, um, which is really cool, and I'm sure people would like to know uh, how you came about becoming Leatherface. Um, well, it it uh, it was geez, it was probably 2010. I had uh, you know met the the producer of uh, Texas Chainsaw. He had uh, he had just acquired the rights to the movie, and we had become friends. You know, we we were working on a project together, uh, a completely different project. It was it was just helping a friend make a TV pilot, and uh, it was uh, it was Christmas actually, uh, 2010. He he's uh, he he threw a big Christmas party at his house. 
And John Lessenhoff, the director, actually wrote a story for Huffington Post where he describes the, the day he met me. And it was at this Christmas party. And, you know, Hollywood is full of parties, and that's part of the business. And he, the way he tells the story is that he was standing in the kitchen of this house uh, having a conversation with Mark Berg, who uh, produced all the Saw movies. He, he ran Twisted Pictures. And he kept looking past Mark, you know, as, as, as Mark's trying to talk to him. And, and finally, Mark got set up and... Uh, he said, man, she, she, she better be hot or you're just a, an asshole. <laughs> and, uh, and John swears, this is true, that he, he, he says, he swears, he said to Mark, I think I'm looking at Leatherface. And I was standing across the room. I, you know, I, I'm not a very sociable person. I, I, you know, I didn't know many people at all at this party. And so, I, you know, I tend to just kind of hang back and watch the crowd. And I was just standing. There. And so... Uh, I, I guess it had come up a couple of times in conversations uh, when they were developing the story and trying to really figure out what to do with it. Uh, you know, what what has happened to Leatherface? You know, I mean, uh, our, our movie takes place years later, and so he's older and, you know, uh, more crotchety, I guess. Mm -hmm. And it was it, uh, apparently it was uttered more than once you know he's 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 we need we need him to be you know big strong uh farm boy uh who you know doesn't spend his life in the gym you know he's he's farm strong and, and several times somebody said you know kind of like dan mm -hmm. <laughs> and so you know it it just really evolved from that you know after uh, i guess john went to went to carl mazicone the producer and, and asked him about me, and Carl said, "Oh yeah, he's an actor, you know." And so that was it. It's one of those. It's one of those Hollywood stories, you know. Of no, no, nobody one day, and and hey, you'd be perfect. And so that that was how it worked out. Um, I met John the following week. We talked about it. I think they all realized I knew more about Texas Chainsaw Massacre than any of them because I was such a big fan. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they gave me the script, I gave them notes, and, you know, we we eventually got to make a movie. Which is really cool, by the way. Really awesome. You, uh, it is. You got to work with Bill uh, Bill Mosley. What was it like working with him? You know, we, we didn't have any scenes together. Um, I, I really didn't get to know Bill Mosley until you know, after the movie was done. Mm -hmm. um, but he, he is just a, a delightful guy. I, I, I love Bill. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we, 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 we've run into each other at, at parties, of course, because like I say, that's, that's half of the business right there. And, uh, you know, we've done, done uh, quite a few horror conventions together. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Bill is Bill is awesome. A, a brilliant guy too. I, I'm not sure if everybody realized. Bill Mosley's a, a, an intellectual giant. Uh, I love him. Real smart. In a man, he's leather facey way. You know? <laughs> Most people know him as uh, Otis from you know like House of a Thousand Corpses and Devil's Reject. Yeah. But yet, go back and check out Night of the Living Dead. You know the Tom Savini remake. He plays you know Barbara's brother in the beginning, and it's like yeah. this. This is the same fucking guy. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Talk yeah. about versatility. Yeah, very versatile. It's really cool. You know, I'd like to talk a little bit about Bad Anger Pictures and what you got on the horizon. And you talked a little bit about Slaughter Farm. Like, do you have a release date for the movie, or is it something that's just currently in the works? Yeah, it, it's currently in development. Uh, that's that's the one we're really pushing on. We've we've got three other scripts that are completed. But, you know, that's, that's certainly one in the forefront. And as soon as we get the green light from the, the people who write checks, uh, mm -hmm. he should have been. I'm, I'm hoping we're going to shoot it this spring. Have you um, shot any footage at all? Or is it just something that's in development, like you say? Yeah, no, we haven't we haven't shot an inch yet. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, the, the script is... The script is done and, you know, at about 98%. Um, but, yeah, it, 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 if, if we can shoot it this spring, which is all our hope, 
uh, we we should be able to get it out this summer. Which would be fantastic. Is it? Are you going to do the crowdfunding? No, we're we're equity funding. So yeah, yeah, the budget's a little bit bigger than some, anything that we could do through a crowdsourcing type platform. So is Slaughter Farm going to be the first of its kind, or is it going to be a continuance of something in the future? Are you going to? Have- yeah, it's the it's the beginning of of what I envision to be a franchise uh, of at least four parts. Um, you know, once you, in, in the new business model of movie making, once you develop an audience, uh, you know, you don't want to let them go. And so that's why, uh, uh, you know, a franchise is, is, is a valuable thing. And I've got outlines for the following two installments. Uh, the, third, the third installment will be a prequel uh, where you'll see the origins. And, and that one kind of has become the most twisted uh, part of the story. How it, it all, you know, How the started. started. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, 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 the real descent into the madness of it. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 I would like to say my, my biggest fear, Ron, Ron likes to say we want to do for, uh, for hikers what Jaws did for swimmers. Mm-hmm. But my, my biggest fear is that we're going to make this movie and somebody is going to realize what a brilliant business plan it is. <laughs> And start going out there and actually doing it. So, gotta, you know, I. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're, we're gonna have we're gonna have to put some kind of disclaimer in the, yeah. in the opening <laughs> title. Yeah, don't try this at home. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Please, you know, it's it's a moral. I don't even know if we can say that. That might give them more ideas. Yeah. You gotta, you know, <laughs> right, man. I mean, it's it's globally. I mean, depends on what you what you read. I've read it's a, a billion dollar year industry and. And from what I understand, that that's not including the uh, above the table, all legal way where you know you you need a you need a, a heart transplant, you get in line. But if you've got the money, yeah, there's other means of acquiring uh, the heart, right? And in some countries, they take because unfortunately, <laughs> done a lot of reading about this stuff. And in some countries, for for uh, very healthy prisoners. They'll, you know, they'll profit off of their prisoners who who aren't going to get out of jail. They'll chop them up, and they'll, you know, they'll sell their their parts. Or in really sad cases, and this is part of the billion dollar a year uh, industry part. In in some th- developing countries, folks will show up and gladly sell a kidney for ridiculously low amounts of money just to just to help them survive and and that's illegal too but you know people do acquire through that that type of means and and dan's story is is about how if someone in the u.s decided to do something like this how how that business model would work and uh Mm -hmm. it is very scary very scary yeah china is a bad place to have a uh a, a life sentence for, for capital crime, I guess. Yeah, it does happen. Ron, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you a question. Uh, before you got into making films, what was the one thing that made you want to start making films? Did you have a particular movie? Anything? Yeah, yeah there, there are a couple of stories. I, I'll, I'll tell my entry into horror first, and then uh, tell you about the other catalyst for me. The first time I really understood or had any inclination of a horror movie. I don't know exactly how old I was because this movie, when it came out, it had several releases over a few years. So I don't remember exactly how old I was. But I was at my cousin's house and um, and she was going out on a date. And she said, I'm going to go see this movie tonight. And she handed me the, the, the newspaper. Remember, we used to actually look at a newspaper mm-hmm. to see when movies are starting. Yes. And I looked at this image, and I will never forget it, absolutely never forget it. And it's such a cliche because of who I'm sitting here right with right now. But she handed me this image, and it was this guy with a chainsaw. And behind the guy with the chainsaw was this woman on a hook. And and it was called the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, I was so interested in seeing the movie. I mean, I was less than 10 years old. I was so interested in seeing the movie, but at the same time, I couldn't imagine anyone being brave enough to go see that. <laughs> That's the very first memory of knowing uh, of a harm. And, and that, that had me hooked, no pun intended, 
from the beginning uh, as far as horror goes. When I got older, I, I, I mean, I read Famous Monsters magazine, the Fangoria, and I was just all up into the horror. I loved it. But really the catalyst for wanting to actually make movies was I was a kid, I was probably around 10, and I saw a making for The Empire Strikes Back. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, uh, I, I was just so interested in the, in the, in the art and craft of, of making movies. Mm -hmm. When I was probably 20-ish, I, I um, inquired to Lucasfilm about doing an internship. And they sent me an application, and I found out really quick, I, would have, I was living in Alabama at the time, that I would have to move to California on my own dime and work pretty much for free. <laughs> and there was just no way for me to do that, so, so I didn't. Um, and then, uh, but the horror bug has just always been in me. Mm -hmm. And then as I've got older and, and um, got into this business, it, it really is a good business model altogether. I mean, not only is it fun to do, but it, it makes really good business sense because horror translates borders, um, transitions borders really well. So like com American comedy falls flat uh, in, you know, in other countries and same could be said for drama, etc. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to horror, we're all afraid of the same thing. And it and it it's a really good business model just all the way around. Right. And if you can have fun doing it at the same time, I mean, you know, why not? Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, just another quick story is about almost three years ago, and um, I met Terry McMinn, who was that woman who hung on the meat hook mm -hmm. when I was a kid. And, and I did a little bit of work and consulting with her just a little bit for a few weeks. And um, she said, I've got somebody you should meet. And I said, oh, cool. And, and she said, she gave me Dan's name. And she said uh, she was gonna get in touch with him first. And uh, that happened. She let me know. She said, Dan's expecting you to, to email him. And I did. And Dan, I don't even know if I've ever told you this story or not, this exact story or not. but. When she first gave me his name, I had no idea who he was. And um, we may have been, we exchanged a couple of emails and might have even talked on the phone. <laughs> and still didn't know exactly who he was. And so I, I finally Googled it or whatever. I mean, this all happened over like just a few hours or a day. I mean, it was all really fast. And when I saw his name come up in Google and the role he played, I'm like, Holy shit, I just watched Texas Chainsaw 3D about a week before on Netflix. And, uh, you know, that, that's how I met Dan. And we started doing some, uh, you know, web work together and a couple of projects and the rest is history. So mm -hmm. that's, that's how I kind of got into this whole horror movie business right now. Awesome. Well, Dan, what about you, man? What, what made you decide to get into horror movies? You know, I, I grew up in a little town just south of Cleveland, and there were there were uh, three uh, weekly hosted horror movies on television. Mm -hmm. I, I can remember at, you know, six years old watching Frankenstein, uh, the original Frankenstein, mm -hmm. you know, at, for the 11.30 movie on a, on a Saturday night. Uh, there was there was always a, a monster movie on Friday night. There was one. Uh, there there was uh, there was a guy who did uh, a lot of uh, Japanese sci-fi on Saturday afternoons, and then another monster movie on Saturday night. And you know that was that was my you know introduction to horror cinema. Mm -hmm. And cinema in general, you know, I mean, I, I, I love Kubrick and Kurosawa are probably the best represented directors in my, my uh, DVD collection. You know, I, I love all cinema and find visual storytelling just fascinating. Mm -hmm. I remember when my, uh, my aunt bought the, the very first camcorder I ever got my hands on and I monopolized the thing uh, <laughs> you know, just just constantly making movies uh, mm -hmm. to dazzle my family and friends um, it's just something I've always done and mm -hmm. then I don't know I got I got the weird impulse to become an actor uh, just out of high school I just couldn't couldn't help myself and ended up going to the uh, community drama workshop in Las Vegas where my family lived and uh, started doing extra work. I was I was an extra in a movie 
with uh, Christopher Lee in 1984. Oh. And while I was while I was doing that movie, I met a uh, another actor who played Count Yorga the Vampire back in the early 70s. And mm-hmm. he he advised me that uh, you know I should I should just move to Hollywood and and uh, you know go for it. I was you know 20 years old at the time. Mm-hmm. And he, he said, he said, go, go to Hollywood, you'll make a living playing monsters. And, you know, I, I thought, yeah, that's a great idea, I'll do that. It unfortunately took me 25 years before I really gave myself up to it and, and started pursuing it. And God damn it, he was right, you know. <laughs> I, I, I wasted 25 years, though. Uh, and, you know, this goes to show it's never too late. George Foreman won the uh, <laughs> heavyweight championship at what 45. You know, some yep. people are just late bloomers. You know, you could totally. I'll tell you what. I think you could rock out the Jason Voorhees character. That's just me. I would love. I've always thought so too. I, you know, I heard Universal is going to remake Frankenstein, and uh, I, I sent an email. I didn't get a reply. I sent an email to uh, this uh, this guy who. Who's produced? He produced the Wolfman movie. Right. I, I told him, uh, you know, put put my name in the in the hat for that one. I want to I want to play Frankenstein, the monster, not Frankenstein, the doctor. You could do it. You could do it. Thank you. So, boys and girls, if you want to find out more about Bad Anger Pictures, this is the way you want to do it. I'll let the boys take over. Steve, thank you for the, for the opportunity for us to talk to you today. I uh, certainly would appreciate people finding us on Facebook. So you can find Bad Anger Pictures on Facebook. Bad Anger, all one word. Bad Anger Pictures. Uh, you can also keep up with the latest on Slaughter Farm at Slaughter Farm on Facebook. And, of course, Dan Yeager, Leatherface on Facebook. And uh, we'd really appreciate it, folks. This is our website, which is super simple to remember, just badanger.com. And I'll take to the website, and you can find everything that we have going on there. Badanger.com. Uh, l- let's talk a little bit more about Slaughter Farm and uh, some of the cast that you got going on in Slaughter Farm. Dan? Well, we we haven't we haven't put it together, you know, at the point where we can release names. But suffice it to say, it's going to be the largest assemblage of Texas Chainsaw alumni outside of Texas Chainsaw. Um, there there will be more leather faces than you should shake a chainsaw at, oh. and 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 a and a host of other uh, uh, great actors and actresses. I, I'm very excited excited about the cast we're, we're putting together, and I look forward to uh, being able to release those details to you. Well, boys and girls, get ready for it. You're going to enjoy it, sure enough. Slaughter form coming at you. Dan Yeager, Ron Scott, Bad Anger Pictures. Links in the description of the video.